Hi, and welcome back to this episode about ASP.NET Core. Today we are going to see how to storage our information like the connection string or your SMTP server credential or whatever you need at runtime time in your application. Before to ASP.NET Core, uh, we, was, we were using the webconfig file, but if you watch the first episode, you already know that the webconfig file is is needed just in case we are running our application on IIS, otherwise we don't need it. For this reason, it's not the best place where to put our code, our um, values, sorry. In this case, we can still use an XML, or if you prefer, like me, uh, we can use a JSON file. To do that, let's go here, right-click on your application, add a new item, you can search for a JSON file, and uh, create it, uh, upsettings.json is the name, and it's, it's okay, by default, Visual Studio is going to add some, some code. We can remove everything here for now. Let's suppose to have this set of values for your configuration. We, have, we need to connect to a database, so we need the database name, the server, host, the port to use to connect to the database, the username and password. In case our application is using Facebook, we need the application ID and the app secrets. And finally, if you have to send some emails, we need the host, the username, password, and other values to connect to our SMTP server. So that's the first point. Now we have the variable, the values into the, the JSON, but how to read? How can we read this value into our code? First things to do is read here the values and put it in something that we can use inside the C Sharp. The best place, of course, is a C-sharp class. So let's start to add it here. Right-click, add a new class, and we can call it My Configuration. Okay, Visual Studio has a really pretty cool thing called Pass Special. You can select everything into your JSON file. You right-click, copy, go back on your my configuration class, delete the class name and go on edit, pass special, pass JSON as classes. Okay, it creates the your JSON structure into a C sharp class. The only thing we can do is you rename a root object with my configuration. Okay. And here we go. We have the values into JSON and now we have the C sharp class the C sharp class that will contain the data. So it's time to move the data from the JSON into this class. To, the, to do that, we need some packages because as you know, SAP.NET Core is as lean as you like, so it's pretty empty. Here I have a set of packages that I'm going to use. So let's go back, back on your application, project JSON, and put here, to, put here your packages. Of course, you can use NuGet interface if you prefer. Maybe it's better because, as you probably know, the project JSON will disappear soon. So you should go on manage NuGet packages, search the package, select it, and install. But it's the same to copy here. The package we are going to use are Microsoft.extension.configuration.environment variables that is going to add the environment variable to the configuration. And we are going to see this soon. The JSON configuration, but if you prefer XML instead of JSON, you can write here XML. It's, it's okay. And a set of extension method that are needed into our application. Okay, now we are ready. We have the JSON, we have the C Sharp clubs, and we have all the needed packages. Let's go into my startup class. Okay. First thing to do is to create a private read only my configuration. Configuration, we can call it configuration. Okay. Here I'm going to say something like my configuration is a new instance of my configuration. Okay. Now configuration exists but is empty. There are no values inside it. I have prepared some code. Let's go here. Okay, what does it mean here? 
I'm creating a new instance of the configuration builder and I'm saying my configuration file is called app, app settings.json is in the content root path that means the root of your application so here and uh, is mandatory and in case someone change the JSON file please restart the application here I'm going to load another file that is called app settings dot the name of the environment dot json and this is an optional file I'm sending all the environment variables to the configuration builder and I'm going to bind the configuration into my instance so here if everything, everything works fine my configuration will contain all the data from the json let's run it I have too many tabs. Quick watch and let's go to see it. Database contains my DB name, password 1423, my SQL host, and everything from the JSON. It's working very well. And the piece is pretty cool, but let's close this one. How can I use a different environment? Because in case I'm running on a development, I have to connect to a different database and I use a different mail server or whatever. Doesn't matter. Here I can add a new JSON file. JSON and I have to call it app settings with the same name of this one, but with the environment name development. But JSON. As you can see here, Visual Studio is going to group the two files because it's the same file but just for a different environment. I can copy everything here and put the values here. Now, app settings development contains the same values of app settings. So let's go in to change some values. Here, my DB name development, my host development. Development also here host development should be nice, should be enough. Okay, if I run it now and I'm going to see configuration, it contains the developer information. So this one is development, and this one is development, and this one is development. So it is working. It is running this file instead of this one because I'm running on a development environment here. Thanks to this line of code. If I change this one with production and I run it again, let's go to see configuration, quick watch. It's running the main file. So it's good. Now the, the only problem is app settings could be giant and the same for development and you have to maintain two different files. But we are just overriding three values so we can remove everything here. This is not changed. Okay. Now it is better. Let's run it again on development. Let's check configuration quick watch and it's working I'm running development and it's absolutely better than the previous version because it contains only the values that I want to override now we have everything ready with our configuration how can we use it inside our application for example I need to connect to the database into my home controller we have to do something like that here a private read only my configuration configuration and then let's go to create a controller so public home controller and I ask for my configuration configuration this dot configuration is equal to configuration okay here I'm saying hey there ASP.NET I need my configuration inside my controller could you send me an instance please 
and then run the application. It's working. Close this one, close this one, and close this one. Here, ASP.NET is answering something like, okay, you are asking me my configuration, but not, but I'm not able to send you what you are asking me. This is why <coughs> I need to teach to ASP.NET Core how to send the configuration. To do that, let's go into our dependency injection section. And we, here we can see something like services, dot add the singleton, and sending this dot configuration. This means for all the classes that are asking for an instance of my configuration, please send always this instance. <coughs> Let's run it again. Here is working. My configuration is fine and contains everything. Okay, now we are ready also to store our information in an external file and read it at the right time. See you soon. Thanks for watching Managing Configuration Files in ASP.NET Core presented by Ugo Latanzi and Syncfusion. For your free ebook in .NET Core or another development topic, go to syncfusion.com.